the main reason we're going to talk about today is the fact that we got these little critters that are eating our ash trees. That little fella right there is doing all his damage. That's it, and chances are you're not going to see an adult. They emerge in the, uh, in the late spring, lay their eggs, and die. Now, when did we start beginning to realize that we had a problem with these emerald ash borers, and where did they come from? Originally, they came from Eastern Asia, um, probably on some shipping material, packing material, pallets, something like that. Started up uh, in the Detroit area, and it just kind of spread out in a big circle. And it got to Kentucky, it was confirmed in 06, 2006. And so we've slowly seen um, the spread move south and west. Pretty much all the counties from northern Kentucky down through the bluegrass region to about Jesmond County have confirmed emerald ash borer infestations. It's likely a lot farther out than that. It just hasn't shown up yet. Well, how about let's go see if we can find a tree that has been bugged, I guess you sure. should say. Well, if you're looking for an ash tree that's been infected, how can you tell that it's got this problem? Unfortunately, by the time we realize it's infected, it's too late. It's too late to do anything about it. When the adults initially lay their eggs in the tree, it's in the uppermost branches, the smallest uppermost branches. Um, so you don't really see any signs of damage for a couple years. The earliest sign you might see would be, you know, some small dead branches up in the top of the tree. There could be a lot of other things causing that as well. Now at this point, I really don't know if this is emerald ash borer or not. There's some kind of borer uh, that was in this tree um, and the woodpeckers have gotten after it. It does. And you know, a lot of people see th the same picture in their trees and they think the woodpeckers are killing the tree. But actually the woodpeckers are just after the larvae of the insects. Uh, the woodpeckers are just taking advantage of the situation. But the, the, the wood, by the time the woodpeckers do this damage to the tree, it's, it's, it's pretty much gone. What I will do is find a, an exit hole. There it is. Clean it up a little bit so we can see the shape of it. This is the, the exit hole uh, that the adult makes when it emerges uh, from underneath the bark of the tree. Uh, very, very distinct D-shaped hole. Uh, bear in mind, there's lots of wood borers out there besides the emerald ash borer and some of them make D-shaped holes too, so no guarantees that just because there's a hole in a tree that it's emerald ash borer. Oh, here's one of the larvae right here. Well, see there? So here we are, we found one of the little offending. And if we were to peel a piece of this bark back, we would see all those galleries uh, where those larvae had been working back and forth, cutting off the nutrient supply to and this tree. And that's what the woodpeckers are after. And that's what the woodpeckers are after. Right. Wow. How does it do the damage to the tree in order to kill the tree? You think about a little bug, how's it gonna kill the tree? The cambium layer of a tree is right underneath the bark. That's where all the nutrients and water are transported between the roots and the trees. Uh, this ash borer lays its eggs in the tree and those developing larvae burrow little holes or little tunnels through that cambium layer. layer essentially cuts off the nutrient flow to the tree. What are we doing about it or can we do anything about it? Um, there's not a lot that can be done about it, honestly, uh, fr from a, a forest management standpoint. Now, if it's a yard tree, there's some treatment options for you. Uh, there's some homeowner-based uh, pesticides that can be used, either as a soil drench or injectable. Uh, there's some other uh, professional-based products, and uh, you would want to get with an arborist to do that. The treatment has to be continual. It has to be every year or every two or three years for now till whenever. Let's talk about good things in the future for the ash tree. Uh, I guess best case scenario is that we've got a lot of ash regeneration, like you said. Um, so even when the big trees die, we've got something to take its place. Um, I guess the best case scenario would be this exotic invasive pest, the population spikes and then crashes that, it, you know, which, is, which has happened in the past uh, with some other insects. Japanese beetles is a good example. Uh, that's probably the best case scenario. I don't know if that's gonna happen. It's time here is limited. Yeah. How? When it gets to this point, it probably won't even leaf out this year. Wow. 
What a shame. Yeah. So, you know, I, I guess the you know the best or worst thing you can do, depending on how you look at it, is cut this thing down and use it for firewood. If Probably you, if you burn thing. firewood. Yeah. Are there rules around uh, different areas of where you can or cannot bring firewood from different areas? Absolutely. Uh, the general rule is don't move firewood. Okay. Uh, and it's it's not only uh, for emerald ash borer. There's some other invasive uh, insects that travel that can travel on firewood as well. Wow. So it doesn't matter what kind of firewood it is, firewood period, you can't take it to some state parks or different areas. Right, especially. And that's actually how, how the ash borer moved. It's how, how it moved long distances. Normally in a year's time, the ash borer naturally doesn't travel more than about a mile and a half. Wow. But you see uh, infestations, you know, 15, 20, 30 miles away from a known infested area, and it traveled on firewood. And I appreciate you coming out here and, and telling us what's going on. And if you'd like more information, www.forestry.ky.gov, 502-564-4496.